And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Josh, we have a new welterweight champion. If there's one thing that Bilal Muhammad has not done, it's just rest on his laurels as far as going after everyone that wants to go after him. He's got people wanting fights. He's got Kamaru Usman, the former champion, who says, you know what, I'll take that title from you. And Bilal's got some words coming back at him. Well, you know, it all started with Bilal was like the guy that kind of people didn't talk about. People always said that oh, he's, he's boring. He's not going to do this. He's not going to do that. Yeah, he's never going to get past this guy. Never going to get past that guy. Well, guess what? He's now the he welterweight did. champ. And he did he it did. all. He did it all. He had a long win streak. He finally got to the title shot. He didn't let it sit. He actually capitalized on it, took the title home. But look, then Kamar Usman came in and goes, hey, he tells, uh, but there's a picture of Bilal with uh, Islam. And is on Mahachev, and the two of them are holding their title belts together. And he goes, Kamar Usman writes a tweet on X. I'll just I call him tweet still, but I still call it X. So he goes, Is he says, Islam is a good man, had to teach him how to hold the belt. And then Bilal comes back, he says, He also taught me how to clean your fingerprints off of it. Kamar Usman <laughs> comes back, he goes, Whose blueprint did you copy to help you win that fight? Damn, at least say thank you. Bilal comes back and says, Laugh out loud. Uh, I did what you couldn't do. I finished the job. I'll send you Bully's blueprint PDF. Just enter your email and credit card information. I thought that was pretty good. Bilal's on a roll right now. He's he's crushing everyone. Dude, he's, 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 he's got taking the no one prisoners down, man. That's Kamar it. Usman comes back and says, all right, enough of the nice guy. You were never chasing me, bum. You were barely in the rankings when I dominated the divisions. FYI, I have a win over Leon, son. And then Bilal comes back. Dominated the division? Question mark. You beat Mazadal twice and went to a cardio kickboxing war with Colby twice. Colby sucks. You were protected by the UFC. Now you can barely walk. Your podcast sucks, and your part in Black Panther sucked also. Oh, little jab oh. there in them. He says, "Damn." Kamar Usman replies back, "Glad you watch me in BP, which is." Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. Unfortunately, no one wants to watch you fight, much <laughs> less put you in a movie. And he oh, says, you funny. were a background character, Bilal says, you were a background character in a movie about fighting. They must have seen your strike and decided no fight scenes. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Damn. Bilal's on a roll right now, man. I Dude. Love, I love Kamar Usman. <laughs> Bilal <laughs> right now, is he's, he's basically chalking up 10-8 rounds. <laughs> that's what he's doing the law's doing it to everybody though he's not he's not taking no prisoners he's like yo i'm just gonna just start chopping you off the legs y'all doubted me i'm coming hard in the paint against you guys boy he just went hard in the paint against Kamar. I, I love kamaro uzman but you gotta look and you say, see this is what happens you're the champion you're gonna lose it eventually or you're gonna walk away from it mm -hmm. and uh there's gonna be somebody else and that person is always going to be able to chip at you about certain things that you did, and you're going to be able to chip about certain things that they did, and there's truth in in all of them. And you look and you go, hey, this is where people need to figure out. There's that that point where it's your time. Mm -hmm. And Kamaro had his time, and, and I'm not saying that he can't get it back. You know, there's a possibility he could, but, you know, he had his time, and it's not easy to hold on to that title, that belt, uh, the pound for pound thing for as long as he did. That's a, that is a tough thing to do, but Bilal Muhammad absolutely deserves everything that's come his way. He worked for it. He went out and he fought everybody that they put in front of him. Nine, 10 fight win streak. Now, I mean, his performance against Leon Edwards was absolutely almost perfection, except for the last, you know, bit in the fifth round, and he, he obviously lost the third round, and he he uh, lost position and got his nose cut in the fifth. But overall, I mean, he made a guy that I know is a very good fighter mm -hmm. look average for most of it. And so right now it's Bilal's time. <laughs> this is what happens 
you know, but this is how you build the fight. And I kind of like the fact that Kamara is going after it because really for Bilal, there's very few welterweights that are on that top 10 that he has not fought. Yeah. But Kamaro is one of those guys that he has not fought. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good-tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. There's only, I think, three of them, John. You got Shavkat, Camaro, and you've Shavkat. got uh, Ian Gary and, and uh, Jack Dilla Maddalena. So four. Okay. I mean, those are the four, I believe, that he hasn't fought and that are up there. In top ten? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and, and right now, two of them are undefeated. Is What's Jack Dilla Maddalena? Well, Is he undefeated, too? He's not undefeated, but he's in the UFC. Uh, what's he at? He's on well, a long Yeah, because you got Ian Gary and, and Shavkat. Ian Gary's undefeated. undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. Ian Gary and Shavkat. Uh, Jack has got a loss. I can't think of who it was to. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm maybe, trying maybe, to remember. Maybe George can come up with that one, but um, he does have a loss. But, I mean, there's guys in there for him to fight. Undefeated in the UFC, two losses. Undefeated in the UFC, losses. but, yeah, okay. he's got two losses. Yeah. Or two lo- Shavkat two losses. And, and Ian Gary, they have no losses. Yeah. I mean, I believe that Shavkat's going to be next because Shavkat seems to... He deserves it. Yeah, he deserves it. I mean, I still believe he needs to fight one more person. I just don't know who. You know? Maybe him or Kamaru. Yeah. I mean, yeah, probably. Come I on. Mean, let's be honest. If you're going to look at it and go, hey, well, let's go with uh, what we have. Well, Ian Gary against Shavkat. They used to train together. Yeah. And the only reason why I'm going to say he needs to fight someone else, but he's taking the same road that, that like Islam and Umar. Like, no one wants to fight him. And so yeah. then I'm like, okay, well, you have no choice but then to give him a title shot. So it, I, I'm not holding it against him if he gets one. Like uh, Shavkat, I'm like, if you get one, you get one. Cool. I mean, you're you're undefeated. What? Never never gone the distance. All of his fights have ended by finishes. And he's obviously a fun fighter. People talk so highly of him from Kill Cliff. And I know a lot of guys out of Kill Cliff, they're like, dude, he's the real deal. He's legit. Oh, he's good everywhere. They call him the boogeyman. Yeah, they're, they're everyone. You no know? one wants to fight him. No one wants, you know. He's, no one wants to fight the boogeyman. He's funny on online, by the way. He says some things that are just, <laughs> but he's funny. So, um, th- th- there's there's a lot to be said about what's going on with Bilal. Bilal's finally found his stride. He understands how good he is. He's always known how good he is. He just he hasn't got the love and the respect he deserves. So he's coming now hard against everyone. Like, hey. You doubted me. You didn't talk about me. You avoided me. You know, like all these things. Kamaro coming out and saying, Kamaro Usman coming out and saying the things he did. It was a little bit to like kind of to poke the bear a little bit, to kind of get a oh, rise, yeah. to see if I Absolutely. could maybe get you to, to, to start talking about a title shot. <clears throat> Kamaro, I think, believes that he could probably take him down and control him or maybe get him on the feet, whatever it is. He believes he's got an advantage there. That's why I think he's kind of poking the bear. But no one ever mentioned Bilal's name as a champion. You never saw Leon mention his name. You never saw Kamar Usman mention his name. You never saw anyone mention Bilal's name because he never got the respect he deserves. And now he's the champion. People can't keep his name out of their mouth. And that's 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 what what it always is, the champion. That's what happens. And that's that's what that title does. No one was saying, yeah, I want to fight Habib. No, no, I want to fight Islam. No, no, I want to fight Umar. No, I want to fight Bilal. None of them were saying that. You know, um, until they won the title. Not, not until they they hold the until title, the and then it's like, oh, I want him. Yeah, and that's so that's part um, of the whole. That's part of the whole game. Yeah, it's making for some fun action. I'm glad that he's taking this pros. Man, he's quick witted. He's got some good stuff. Yeah, he's does. got some good stuff. So I'm admiring the work right now. So he's laying yeah. out some ten eight rounds. He's giving people some L's. You know, um, it's going to be fun to see how it all shakes out. But he does have his hands full. He needs to keep himself on track because I think he's got a he's got a good couple years left in him. He's thirty eight years old, I believe, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty six. I think is he? I thought he was the older. Bilal. Bilal's thirty six. No, no, no. Is he? I thought he was thirty eight. No, now he's thirty six. Okay. Oh, thirty six. George, use your words, buddy. Okay, I say that to my five year old. What you got? Thirty six. Okay, thirty six. Oh. Josh Thompson was oh, wrong. Boy. Gosh, for once oh, in my boy. life, I was wrong. Oh, Damn for it. once in your life, I maybe got twice. What you got. We won't talk about the one the other time, though. I was young. I needed the money. Um, (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, but I think overall he's doing a great job because you look the one knock, not one. There was two knocks on him. Interviews were cringe. Okay. Like, Oh, it's just too much. He's forcing it too much. And he's a boring fighter. I'm sorry. He stood toe to toe with Leon, had some great wrestling, had some good stand up. Uh, he fought a great, well-rounded fight. He's a true MMA f- fighter and he's proving that now, right now, put him on the mic. Maybe just give, maybe just take away the mic. Then if you don't like what he has to say, but man, he's lighting up Twitter right now. He's crushing X, and I love it. I love that he's smashing dudes. I love he's handing out L's. I love that he's dishing out 10-8 rounds. I want to see a couple 10-7s to Ian Gary, though. I'd like to see that. You know, if he can hand a 10-7 to Ian Gary, I'd like to see it because that's another guy who's very cringe. they got to take the mic away from that guy. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm all for him handing out a 10-7 to or, or keep the wife out of it. <laughs> this is true. Keep the wife so, out of it. But I don't think – I don't know if that's Bilal. I don't know if – has he no, said anything Bilal's about his wife? No, not like that. No, yeah, no, I don't, no, say, no, I don't no, think no. Bilal's that way. But other people have brought the oh, wife. Of course. Like, stop. Of course. Don't. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be uh, work doing some uh, stuff this week with uh, Danny Sabatello. And one thing I can oh, always, I know. The so, Italian gangster. I've got Jordan Oliver. The I've got Jordan King Oliver. King of the fuck yous. <laughs> I, I've got Jordan Oliver. I've got Danny Sabatello. I've got Brent Primus and Mads Burnell. So I'll be working with them this week. Oh, there you uh, go. I was I was with Mads. You know, he was training when I was at, in Vegas and stuff. And I was talking. He is absolutely hysterical. He's a great guy, man. He's such is a great funny guy. As hell, man. So I'm gonna put together a little piece for with the, with the four of them, and we're gonna have some fun. So it'll be a good little uh, inter- interaction. Uh, on fight day, giving you guys some little uh, back scene stuff. Uh, we're gonna have breakfast with Mads Burnell. I'm going to do a lobby call with Jordan Oliver, and then I'm going to actually go to the venue with Danny Sabatello, and then I'll be doing probably an interview with Brett Primus while he's getting his hands wrapped or while he's warming up or right after he warms up, but I'll be in locker room with Brett Primus, just, you know, being around him, just talking with him, just chat, chatting him up, what's going on in cool. his mind. So we Very will cool. be there. I will be there. John will be at home in the comfort of his own home. I and- will be at home, but I will be. Yep there for you to talk to so you better talk to me yeah we'll see i don't know if they're gonna give me a mic to talk to you but Oof. i will definitely uh be there with those guys it's gonna have some some good stuff so hey i'm looking forward to it man i'm looking forward to all this hopefully you guys enjoyed this show and john go ahead take us away hey for everyone out there thanks for listening in we will see you